well, for over 25 years, I've been creating art and teaching art to thousands of people. But now we have AI. Is that the end of art as we know it? Or can it be used to our advantage? So in this video, I'm going to show you lots of different ways that we can use AI to enhance our reference photos. And then right at the end, I'm going to show you a few ways that perhaps you may think is a little bit unethical ways to use AI, perhaps something you wouldn't want to do, or perhaps you would. So let's jump right in. So let's take a look at this young giraffe. I, I photographed this. It's a nice image. It'd make a nice drawing or painting all on its own. But perhaps I could make it more interesting. So there was actually more grass at the top. Okay. I've cropped it down like this. Now, if I actually expanded the bottom of it down, okay. Now, if I use my selection tool and just select all that bottom part, but I've also got some of the sand in. Edit Generative Fill. Now, that's where the AI part comes in, okay? Content Away Fill, Generative Fill, and Generate Image. That part, Generate Image, is where you generate the whole image, okay? That's where these get they, these people get these cartoon-looking type of things from. But I'm going to use Generative Fill. Now, if I leave it blank, it'll analyze pixels that are in that, you know, that little section that I've got there that I overlapped. It'll analyze that and it'll fill in what it thinks should be like there. So let's just let it do it. And you just click generate and it's going to give me three different examples of what it thinks could be at the bottom. So there you go. It looks pretty real. So it's decided there would probably be perhaps a tree and some shadows on there as well. Irrespective of whether you like the image or not, it's done that. Here's another one. See it's got the blur, the photographic blur going into the sharpness and there's another one. Okay, so you could regenerate again if you wanted to. Instead of letting it do what it wants, what if I typed in reflective pond instead and let that generate and let it think about that. I've never actually used an image like this. What do you think of that? So it's evaluated it. We've even got the wetness of the sand by the edge of the pool, pond, water hole, whatever it would be. I've got, let's give me a couple of images. Something going on in the top. Looks like there's another head there. Something going on here as well. So let's pick that one and let's generate again. Let's let it do another example for us. And it's analyzing the pixels at the top, the pixels at the bottom, and giving what it thinks is the correct thing. So say you wanted to use this for your drawing. That top section that's a bit weird, you could just leave that out. The rest of it looks really good. That's excellent. Okay, that looks very realistic. That's another version of it. Again, pretty realistic. So it's taken what would have been perhaps a boring image and created that which could be more exciting. So let's shut that one down, give you a couple more examples. So this one, zoo photo, as you can clearly see, I could crop out that top perhaps, crop that down to there. By the side is kind of like a hut made out of grasses. Let's remove it. So I use the remove tool and I just color it in. like that and then get it all just let it go and let it do its thing now when I used to clone things out like this that take forever okay it's done that in seconds not brilliant but it's done it I'm using my images for reference photos to draw from so I change things anyway right so let's leave that let's expand on the bottom again that should expand okay now if not I'll do it a different way yep and I'll select this, let me select it a bit different, lasso tool. And what I'll do now, I'll kind of give it a bit of a wavy edge by here. And then come all the way down, select all the bottom and up, and let go. So all that bottom is selected. Edit, generative fill again. And let's again do a reflective pond. Let's try that. Generate again. What's cool is that sometimes when you take a photo, especially in a zoo, you may have things like bars or a wall at the bottom where what you wanted really was grass or something. Okay, so there's three 
versions again. Sometimes it's slightly wrong, okay? But like I said, if we're using it for art, then you can adjust that anyway. That's quite realistic looking. That's really realistic. So, so do you see what I used to do in the old days, back 25 years ago, I would have the idea, you still gonna have the idea, a reflective pool, that would have been better. I would have looked for images for reflective pools to see how the re reflection works. I would have printed out the rhino and the baby rhino. I would have flipped it in Photoshop. I would have stuck all of this together with masking tape and tape. Then I would have done my thumbnail drawings. This could have took me, taken me days to do, literally days to do it. Now I can get my ideas on paper really quickly. For better or for worse, I can do it and I can see how I think it could look. And then I can do my drawing or whatever, work from it and start and adjust things if I want to. Let me give you some more examples. Okay, so this is a typical image you get when you take photos in Zoo. They tried to make the habitat really natural looking. So they got lots of slate and stone in there, but they've put in a fence and that's a problem. It doesn't look very good at all. So what if I use the lasso tool and just go kind of close because as I said, I'm not after doing this to make photos perfect. I'm after this to make art from it. And then I go close to the body like that, go up to the top around there. And then what if I do generative fill again and just leave it blank and let it do its thing where it'll analyze the photo again. That's uh, pretty much solved that problem straight off. There's another variation of it. Brilliant again. Another variation of it. And like I said, that's really good. And that, I like them both. So I can actually, let me see, generative expand, okay? I can expand it out to the side. So I select generative expand. Sometimes, as I said, they could be a fence, a pillar, but it could be too tight. Do you know what I mean? It's, I would really want more room. So let's really chan channel, uh, challenge it. <laughs> Struggling with my words. Let's just leave nothing as a prompt and let's just say, just generate it. You think of what you think needs to be there. So really we would need a leg or two, a bit of body, some more grass, wall. That's uh, pretty impressive. Some of the looks out a bit on the proportions. That's really quite good, isn't it? That's out. You can see the foot there is all over the place. But uh, that's really pretty good. And that. You can make the you know, slight adjustments anyway. So let me show you something else I can do. Right, so sometimes you may be, as I was recently, on holidays. This is not my photo, but it's giving you the example. You're on holidays, you've got an ancient village, which is where we were, and the buildings are so old, and then you've got things like wires and cables that pretty much spoil it. You could be on Photoshop for hours doing this, literally hours doing it. Now we've got a removal tool. That's what we used to use. You draw along each wire and hope for the best basically. But now we've got fine distractions and we've got wires and cables. So what it's gonna do now, and this one does take quite a bit of time, it's assessing the scene. It's looking for all things that are like a wire or a cable because it knows, well, they've told it that, you know, that's something us photographers deal with and have problems with extremely frequently. And there you go, all gone. So if I go edit, undo, and there they are, all back. And you see how many they were, and there they are, all gone. Okay, here's one that I've generated the whole background. I didn't select properly around it at all, I just did it very quickly. Okay, just to show you that. Now, let's create a new canvas and let's say, let's just use that size. Okay, so this is where things start to get a bit where people don't like it. Okay, but I'll show you it anyway. This is where you generate an image completely. Okay, so let's say Halloween's coming up. So let's say 
raccoon in Halloween scene content type the say the say art and that'll make it a bit more what would we call it fantasy looking okay you can put your own reference image in so with those rhinos or whatever tigers I could put in a reference and it'll kind of use that as an idea then you can pick different effects as well let's leave that and let's just go generate okay there you go you've seen things like this online yeah got that surreal look to it you can see why people are attracted to these type of images I could swap the raccoon to say baby elephant does this thing and there we go again do you like it don't you like it do you think this should be allowed shouldn't be allowed but whatever you think it is what it is so let's try do another one uh, Robin in a snowy Christmas scene people have asked for that okay members have asked for that we do the art one so it's a bit more and we'll see what it picks up okay so would people like to draw that as a lesson and I show them how to do it would they like that as a lesson would they like that as a lesson or would they turn around and say there's no way I'm doing an AI generated lesson I don't agree with that I'm leaving your channel a white robin you see so it is hit and miss like I said but hopefully this has give you an idea of at least Photoshop with AI there's lots and lots of other programs that's doing it as well don't just blame Photoshop for it as I said there's lots of these AIs they are doing it for videos for film you name it it's on there but hopefully this has given you a bit of a look into the process and I'd be super interested to hear your thoughts in the comments whether you like AI you see the benefit of it or you're really against it it'd be interesting to know your thoughts see you all on the next video